Okay, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we are doing the first kind of amplitude modulation. This is part two, titled Double Side, Double Side Band Subrest Carrier, DSP-SC. So, remember this block that we had seen before? We said there are different types of AM, and now we are focusing on the first type called Double Side Band Subrest Carrier. <coughs> the class objectives will go over the definition of what DSP-SC is. Then we'll go on to modulation and demodulation. The beauty about this presentation will show you things in time and in frequency. We'll conclude with some examples. Now, what is double side band subrest carrier modulation and where do we get the name from? You have to be patient a little bit. We define the message M of T to be a, a message of bandwidth B hertz. If you want a radiance, that's going to be 2 by times B radians per second. So the bandwidth is B hertz. The frequency equivalent for this message or the frequency representation would be capital M of F. Now, our carrier, which is shown in red here, is defined to be cosine 2 by FCT. FC is the frequency of the carrier, and we assume that the frequency of the carrier is much, much larger than the bandwidth of the message. So we'll be shifting the signal into much higher frequency. Now, in double sideband, the time domain expression, the definition of a double sideband, is equal to the message times the cosine times the carrier, m times the carrier, as simple as that. What is the frequency domain representation? The frequency domain, if you go back to Fourier transform properties, multiplying by cosine result in shifting the spectrum to the right and to the left in double sideband by the amount equal to the carrier frequency. So this does the shifting process. And we have a scaling factor of half. The input is the message shown in blue. The carrier is shown in red. This is, this is the multiplier. is basically the double sideband subrest carrier modulator. It's a very simple operation. This is the transmitter. And what you get is the green signal. It's double sideband subrest carrier. So you need to remember this expression as the basic definition of double sideband subrest carrier. And we'll see why we call it double sideband subrest carrier. So this is the important formula to be remembered in time and in frequency. Now, if you assume that this is your signal in time and frequency, sorry, this is the F axis, it has a bandwidth of B, and this is the carrier shown in the second diagram here, it's just two deltas. If you multiply these two, you get the convolution, or basically you get the two images of the original spectrum of the message shifted to FC. So this was B, it's now becoming FC plus B. This was minus B, it's FC minus B. Similarly, we have a negative image. Don't forget also that the amplitude, which was A, is now scaled down by a factor of half. It's now A over 2. So just multiplying by a carrier does the operation. Now, you can answer now, why do you call this double sideband? Because the original bandwidth, we just look at the positive frequency. The original bandwidth, which was B, now is becoming double the bandwidth. It's now becoming 2B, and hence the name double sideband. We'll see later on why we call it subrest carrier. But if you want to see things in, free, in time domain, this is a frequency domain. If you want to see things in time, let's say that this is the message. And what you have here is the carrier. Now, if you multiply any signal by a carrier, how do we sketch the result? This is M of T, and this is the carrier. But how do we sketch the signal, which is the multiplication of the two? Remember that the carrier is much higher frequency than the signal. And remember that the carrier, sorry, the carrier oscillates between... <coughs> Sorry, positive and negative one, plus one and minus one. So your signal will be multiplied by a number which is plus one or minus one at maximum. So to get the multiplication, we sketch the original signal, we sketch the negative of the signal, the signal multiplied by minus one, and then we fill inside the signal by the carrier. So the envelope of the signal now becomes the original signal from outside. So this green and red colors are just shown for illustration. What we have is the carrier inside. So the carrier inside represent the multiplication. You can see here now that the signal is reflected in the amplitude, and hence this is one type of amplitude modulation. So if somebody give you a different signal and ask you to sketch the double sideband subrest carrier signal in time, all you need to do is invert the signal in, um, around the x-axis, 
and get the signal um, sketched. So if it's a square, I'll get the mirror image and then I'll fill inside with the required signal. Now, we can summarize here that we started by a bandwidth of P. Now the bandwidth become 2B. We also have, we can call this side, which is above the carrier frequency, we can call it, we can call it uh, the upper sideband, USB. Upper sideband, which is this, which is the part of the spectrum above this. It's not universal serial bus, it's ultra, uh, sorry, it is upper sideband. Now for the lower part, which is below the frequency, this side, I'm calling them in red and blue for illustration. Otherwise, there is no difference between, between them. So we call this upper sideband and this is lower sideband, USB and LSB. And remember that for shifting, you get two images. To guarantee that the, the images will not overlap, we have to make sure that this part of the signal will not overlap with this. So we have to make sure that FC, okay, uh, minus B should be greater than uh, minus FC, which is this point here, minus um, plus B. So if you've solved this, you can take this to the other side. We have 2FC should be greater than 2B, which is FC should be greater than B, which is what I'm saying here, that to avoid the overlap, the minimum required carrier frequency is greater than B. But don't worry, because we already say that FC is usually much, much greater than B. Once more, if you want to sketch in the time, if somebody give me a different signal like this signal. Okay, let me just think about the signal. And you want to sketch the, the double sideband. All you need is first the mirror image of this. And sometimes it's not obvious. And then we have to fill inside with the proper carrier. So the, this purple color signal is... the amplitude modulated double side band signal and so on. Forgive, forgive me for the sketch, I am sketching on a vertical display. Let's go now to the demodulator. We know how to get the modulation, you multiply by a carrier, but how do we get the signal back? It seems that the demodulation process is similar to the modulation, as you can see here on the diagram, except that we are going to use a low bass filter. We'll see things in time, We'll see things in frequencies. So we have color coding here. We have green, the input. Now, always keep in your mind that whenever we have demodulation, we don't start with the message. In fact, we start with the with the modulated signal, and we hope to get the message at the output. All right. So here is the E signal, the signal at the output of the multiplier. The double sideband subrest carrier signal is m times cosine. If you multiply again by cosine, exactly the same cosine, we get cosine squared. We use trigonometric property or identity to go from here to here. Cosine squared is one half times one plus cosine double the angle. Okay, now this is the signal at this stage. We can split the two terms here. We have m hat over m over, m over two plus m t over two times cosine. Which one of these two terms we want? We want this term because we are doing demodulation. So how do we get rid of this term? We know that this is different than this in frequency because this is shifted to much higher frequency. In fact, not to omega C, to double omega C. So how do we recover this? Yes, we use a low bass filter as shown here. The bandwidth of this low bass filter should be B hertz. Now, to see the things in frequency, if you do the full transform of this part of the signal, this is giving you capital M divided by 2. Here we have we already have half here. Multiplying by cosine give you two shifts to 2FC if you are using F. And then one half from before, one half from the property of multiplying by cosine, we get one fourth. So a low bass filter will just take the baseband signal and remove the, shift, the other signals. After the low bass filter, we get the blue signal, F of T, and luckily it's related to the message. It's half the message. Remember that scaling by a number is not distortion. Okay, we, ha we have no problem with scaling by number. We can always use an amplifier. Or we can multiply here instead of cosine. We can multiply by two cosine if we are interested in getting the same exact message at the output. Okay, so the process of demodulation is basically multiplying again by uh, a cosine and using a low bass filter in addition. 
Usually this low pass filter will show up at the end of all demodulators. Now let's see things in more details. Now as I promised, let's see things in time and in frequency, two different ways of looking at the demodulation process. So the title says here time and frequency representation of double sideband, the demodulation process. Okay, let's start from the top here. What you see at the top here is basically the original signal. The first figure at the top is the original signal. So here we have the original signal. And uh, it's already double sideband, suppressed carrier, because we are doing demodulation. Uh, the second spectrum shown here is just basically the carrier. We're going to multiply these two so we get convolution. We get two images of the original, of everything, shifted to the right and to the left. So this first image, this is going to go to F, 2FC. Okay, this is going to be 2FC plus B, 2FC minus B, basic shift by an amount equals to FC. Similarly, this is going to go here. It was minus FC. If you shift by FC, it becomes in the base band. It goes to the original frequency. What is the amplitude? Okay, the amplitude now is was A over 2. It's now going to be A over 4. And we have A over 4. Now, the second image is the negative shift. So this is going to go to minus 2FC. And this one is going to go to the base band 0. So we get another amplitude of A over 4. Luckily, the two images in the baseband are going to overlap, and the scaling will become A over 2. How do we get rid of uh, the, the images at high frequency, the part of the spectrum at high frequency? We use a low bass filter shown here. The bandwidth of this low bass filter should be B, the bandwidth of the message, and we have recovered our signal. So we have, showing, uh, we have shown things in the frequency domain. Now it's time to see things in the time domain. In the time domain, now this is the input signal, which is the double sideband subdisc carrier signal. And now we um, are going to multiply by a cosine. So it's, this is going to be cosine squared. This is m of t times cosine squared. So remember that cosine squared is always positive. It has double the frequency, as you can see here, double the frequency of the original one. And basically, uh, you get, because it's, this is always positive, you get the same amplitude. This is called, now, as if we are rectifying the signal, uh, and somehow, so we get cosine squared. It's the same as the original signal, but filled with half cosine, or cosine squared, which is basically rectified cosine with double the frequency. If you use low bass filter in time, you can think of this as we have, um, as if we have small frequency variation, which represent the message, and high frequency variation, which represent the carrier. So using a low bass filter, a low bass filter <coughs> allows the low changes to pass, but the high changes will be suppressed, so we, we recover our signal back. Once more, we have shown the, the double sideband suppressed carrier demodulation process in time and in frequency. Now, here is an example that says, here is an example about double sideband suppressed carrier, and specifically we are looking at dual tone modulation. A tone is one sinusoidal. Dual tone is when your message is made of two sinusoids. The first part of the signal says, sketch the spectrum of M of T. Uh, I'd like to warn you that don't get confused here between F and Omega. It's very easy to get uh, trapped. So uh, Omega C here is 100. Then F, the frequency, is 50 over pi. If you want to skip the spectrum, cosine gives you two deltas using Fourier transform tables, and they're scaled by half. If you want to use Omega, the two deltas are going to be scaled by pi. Okay. So here is the spectrum in Omega, and here is the spectrum in F. So, in our presentation, we usually stick with F, just in case you want to see how things are different, then the spectrum is shown above. So, cosine, this term, at 30, which is 15 over by here, shown, let me just map, this is the two deltas, the original spectrum, the, the original magnitude was 1, and now it's becoming half, this was 2, it's becoming 1. Of course, similar spectrum, uh, is uh, found here at the top, but deltas will be scaled by 2 by, only the deltas. Now, in the second part of the question says, sketch the spectrum of the double sideband suppressed carrier signal. 
multiplied by uh, cosine 100 t. Okay, it means the signal is going to be shifted to 100 omega. And to avoid scaling again by half, he's saying multiply by two. So the same scaling will get two images. Notice that 100 here is the is the radiance. We can show things in frequency. By uh, we can show things in frequency by assuming that the frequency here is going to be um, 100. It's going to divide by two by. It's going to be 50 over by. So the carrier frequency is 50 over by. So how do we get the final answer? I will take the entire image here. Add to it 50 over by, everything will be shifted to by 50 over by, so this becomes 60 over by, 65 over by, and so on. Now, similarly, we have a negative image. So this is the spectrum of a double side band subluxed carrier. Remember, it's not very obvious to get the omega, because if you want to get the omega, you just shift this to the right and to the left by amount by a factor uh, 200. We don't multiply by by again. The spectrum of cosine has by in the omega domain. It has half in the frequency domain. Be careful. The spectrum of cosine has a by here and it has a half here in, this, in the spectrum. But if you multiply by cosine, all you need to do is repeat the images right and left and scale by half. You scale by half whether you are using the omega or the frequency domain. Okay? So I will take the entire image. There is no more bys. Just scale by half, whether I am sketching by omega or frequency. I'm showing you the answer here. If you want the answer in frequency, you just need to multiply by 2 by uh, for all the values. Okay, so you might want to spend more time on this. All right, in this practice, it says 100 kilohertz carrier cosine 2 by times 10 to the power 5. This 10 to the power 5 is the carrier frequency. Is amplitude modulated double side band subluxed carrier by a signal by a signal m of t cosine given by the following. Again, this signal is dual tone. The first frequency, as you can see, it is 1k, 1 kilohertz, and the second frequency is 2 kilohertz. If you take 2 by from here, then you have the remaining 2k. It says what frequencies are contained in the resultant modulated signal. Remember that in double side band, we get upper side and lower side. The carrier frequency plus the content of the message and the lower on the carrier frequency minus the content of the message. So we'll get, if you add, you get 101. 100 plus 1 is 101. K, okay. then 102 K. We also have 99 and 98. We got them by subtraction. Things will become clear if you solve the second part of the question, which says sketch the frequency spectrum of the resultant signal. You need first to sketch the spectrum of the signal. Remember, you have dual tones. Okay. You have um, dual tones, A, 10, 2K, 1K. I'm just sketching. And then you, when you multiply, when you get the double side band, you shift everything to higher frequency. I'm just showing you here the single side spectrum, but it's your choice. You can also sketch the double side spectrum. The magnitude, of course, will be reduced to half and four. Uh, there's a difference between double side and single side spectrum. You can go back to our videos. You may also use radians frequency, radian frequency, and all deltas would be scaled by a factor of two by. So enjoy this practice. And if you have any comment or questions, you are most welcome to uh, write your comments down uh, below. Uh, and we will try to answer them. Also remember that we have covered why we call it double side band. And we'll see later on why it's called subrest carrier because it does not have carrier. There is another type we will learn later on, which has a carrier. So compared with that, double side band plus carrier, this is called double side band subrest carrier. So you, may, you might want to watch the, uh, the coming videos to understand why. Thank you for your time. I appreciate being with us.